Okay, in this example, I want to look at Bayes' theorem and a very real-life example. So, and this is interesting. This is certainly, I think, an interesting use of Bayes' theorem, and it's, I think, probably a little counterintuitive to what most people would think initially. And Bayes' theorem, you know, it's interesting. People, people have been convicted in, you know, the court of law or exonerated in, in our wonderful courts of law based on people not understanding Bayes' theorem and people using just really crappy statistics. There's, there's a, you can Google Bayes' theorem and, and court convictions or Bayes' theorem and law, something to that effect. And you'll find some interesting court cases and other interesting misuses of it. So uh, I would certainly encourage you to do that. So here's a, a very real life example from, uh, you know, what could happen at the doctor's office. And it's certainly, you know, these, these are very reasonable statistics that we're using here. Nothing, you know, nothing at all crazy about these. So so next time you get a bad test result, maybe at least have a little glimmer of hope, not that you're going to be thinking about Bayes' theorem at that point. But Okay, so here it goes. So approximately 1% of women age 40 to 50 have breast cancer. I think most of these statistics are actually pretty correct, um, but don't hold me to it. 1% of women aged 40 to 50 have breast cancer. So one way to test for breast cancer is to have a mammogram. So if, if somehow we knew in, a, in advance that the, the woman already did have breast cancer, it says there's a 90% chance of them having a positive test from the mammogram. And a woman, though, who doesn't have cancer there's a 10% chance of a false positive result. So somebody that doesn't have cancer, there's a 10% probability that it actually says, hey, you do have cancer. Okay, don't get this 90% and this 10% sort of mixed up. You know, this could be 90% and this could be 5%. It's don't, uh, they don't have to add up to 100% or anything like that is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so, okay, so, so suppose, you know, uh, somebody walks in there and they take this test and it comes back and it says, hey, you're positive. What is the probability that that person actually has breast cancer? Okay, right? So, and this is what happens in real life, right? It's not like you, you already know you have cancer and you go in there and take the test. We, we, this is what happens in real life. We want to figure out the probability that you actually have cancer given that your test result was positive. That's what we're trying to determine in this case. Okay, so using our Bayes' theorem formula here, and again, if you look at this, you probably think, hey, these, you know, these aren't terrible, right? There's a 90% chance of them diagnosing it correctly if you have it, only a 10% chance of this false positive. You know, intuitively, you may say, hey, these seem like, I don't know, maybe this is a pretty strong test. Let's see how, how wonderful it is. Um, so we're trying to figure out the probability. You can think about A as the event A as being that you have cancer, and the event B being that you test positive. So if we fill in the right side of our formula, it says we would have to calculate the probability that you test positive, given that you actually have cancer, and we multiply that by the probability that you have cancer, and we divide that by the probability of uh, the probability that you test. Excuse me, uh, the probability that you would test positive. Okay, so this is what we have to compute now. I'm going to make a little tree diagram just because I always like them. So I'm going to make a little tree diagram. So I guess what can happen in this this situation. So either you have cancer or there's no breast cancer. And then one of two things can happen in each case. Either you test positive or you test negative using this mammogram. So either you test positive or you test negative. So let's see. We said 1% of women uh, 
have cancer in this age bracket. So there's a 1% or 0.01 probability that you have cancer. If you do have cancer, we said that there's a 90% chance, um, a 90% chance or 0.9 that you'll test positive. And therefore, there's a 10% chance that you'll actually test negative. Okay, so not a good situation. You don't want to have cancer and then test negative because then you think everything's okay, clearly. Um, well, if there's a 1% chance that you have cancer, there's a 99% chance that you don't have cancer. Now, we said, though, even if you don't have cancer, there's a 10% chance of this false positive. So there's a 10% chance that you'll still test positive, and there's a 90% chance that you'll uh, it'll come back negative, which is correct. Okay, so now we just want to fill in these values, okay? So we said the probability that you test positive, given that you actually have cancer, we said that that was 90% or 0.9, right? So the probability that you test positive, given that you actually have cancer, so that's our, our very top branch here. And we multiply that by the probability that someone has cancer in the first place, which is 0.01. Now, in the denominator, we're going to uh, figure out the probability that you test positive. So again, I just follow all the branches out to where uh, you test positive. So I'm going to highlight these. And again, what we do in this case is we just multiply the values along along the respective branches, and then we add them together. So then I'm going to take 0.99 and multiply that by 0 0.10. So this is now what we have to compute. This is going to be the probability. So you go in there, you get a positive result. This is going to represent the probability that we actually do have cancer. Okay, so again, scary situation. Uh, one I hope none of us ever has to go through. So let's see, 0 0.01 times 0 0.9. So let's see, okay, obviously, duh, same thing. Let's see, 0 0.99 times 0 0.1. That's just going to shift the decimal, so 0 0.099. And now let's see, if we add these up, we've got 0 0.009 on top, 0 0.099 plus 0 0.009, that's going to make 0 0.108. Now, we could multiply the top by 1,000 and the bottom by 1,000 as well, and that's going to just shift the decimal places over three times. We could write this as 9 over 108. This is the probability that you actually have cancer. It's 9 divided by 108. Let me turn that into a decimal for us. This is 0 0.083 repeating, which is roughly an 8.3% chance. So again, what does this say? It says if you go in to the cancer, take the cancer test, it says you get a positive result, right? So the doctor brings you in and says, hey, um, you, you've tested positive, we think you've got cancer, and, you know, obviously, no matter what, right, you, I, we would all get upset. It actually turns out that you have a less than 10% chance of actually having cancer. Okay, so, in a sense, right, that's, that would certainly make me feel better. You've got less than a 1 in 10 chance of actually having cancer. So, this is very interesting. I think this is, these, this data was actually taken. I think this is, again, accurate data. I think a mammogram, um, again, don't hold me to it, but I think this is, these are accurate results about, um, false positives and things of that nature and, uh, the percentage of women that have cancer. So, so if you're, you know, know someone between 40 and 50 that tested positive for cancer, um, there's actually a, a very high probability that they, in fact, do not have cancer at all. So very interesting result, I think. I, it kind of blew my mind the first time I saw this. You know, right, there's a 90% chance of that, they'll, that it's uh, correct if you have it, um, etc. So super interesting um, I think very enlightening little problem. So kind of definitely a real life application of Bayes theorem and where it shows up.